In this video, I'd like to show you a little bit about the trains that we are uh, having uh, on our automated train layout that we've built this year. Uh, it's those six trains that work differently than uh, you uh, might be used uh, to on your LEGO train uh, layout because we're not using uh, the power functions remote control uh, or the powered up controller anymore. Uh, instead, we're controlling those trains directly via a computer. Um, how does that work? I'll show you in this video. The first train is the Eurostar train. Uh, the original operates between uh, London and Paris, goes through the Eurotunnel under the Northern Sea. Uh, it's a pretty long train here, it's over uh, two meters long, that's about seven feet. And um, well, uh, inside it's nothing really special here. We are running it with the power up units. Uh, the interesting thing is that those things are working via Bluetooth, so we are able to connect uh, to them uh, to our central PC. Uh, if we have the right Bluetooth dongle for it, you need a special one. And then, um, well, what's also special about the train is that the cars are a bit longer than you uh, are probably uh, used uh, to. Uh, they are two studs longer on each end, so uh, all in all, they're four studs longer. That makes the train look more. Uh, that makes the train look more realistic on the layout. And what's also important is, of course, we have a second motor uh, in the end. And if you want to do that, uh, you need to. Um, take the motor and put it on the front of the train as the two engines will go in different directions of course. Uh, I think that Lego uh, thought about that uh, and had people like us in mind uh, who would do that and uh, if you want to change it it's pretty forward inside and, and, and not really complicated. I, I think Lego uh, thought about that and had that in mind when they constructed the train. So, that's pretty easy. Uh, the next one is the uh, TGV. It's a train from France, high speed train from France, in the original paint, mm -hmm. orange, from the 80s. Um, inside the train, it looks a little bit different uh, from what uh, was uh, in the original when I bought it. Uh, here we have a Wi-Fi receiver from 40 bricks. Uh, that's a custom Lego part supplier. Uh, and uh, what's special about this receiver is that uh, it's a Wi-Fi receiver. So we control this train via Wi-Fi. And uh, this gives us a lot of uh, options uh, that we don't have with the traditional uh, control systems. Um, the most important is that we can control the train from the PC and uh, also uh, there is a um, special connector uh, on this receiver that we can use for lights uh, or we can also use it as a data uh, connector uh, to a little Arduino microcontroller that we can place in the train. So that's uh, a lot of options that we have if we use those Wi-Fi controllers. I believe they are uh, indeed the best you can get at the moment for controlling trains. The next one is the ICE train. It's the German high-speed train from the Deutsche Bahn. And uh, this is also not uh, what came with the package when I bought the train. It has a um, Lego powered up unit inside, uh, which can be turned off uh, and on by just pressing the button here. And um, the train is uh, just five cars long. It's pretty agile. In the middle there is an extended car, which is a little bit longer than the other ones. Uh, same principle like the Eurostar car rebuild. 
Uh, and that's a, that's a pretty good train, it runs very quickly, and I even have uh, rechargeable batteries inside. And I didn't think it was possible, but the train is, is running quite well, even with a low voltage inside. Speaking about uh, battery power, this is the next train, the Santa Fe Express. Probably, probably the uh, most beautiful train that LEGO has ever built. And uh, if we have a look inside in the engine, we see that things are really different from what you are used to. This is a battery pack of rechargeable batteries with eight AA batteries. So the nominal voltage of that train is actually 9.6 volts. And if they are fully charged, we are rather talking about 11 and a half volts. Uh, so this is definitely the fastest train I have and it's a really big fun to, to drive that fast train. This is the 40 bricks receiver that was mentioned earlier. It's four by five studs long and can be pretty easily integrated into almost any train. So I didn't have any problems with any of my trains. The next train is the mask cargo train, also a very beautiful train. It has also a 40 bricks receiver inside and runs on normal standard uh, batteries with battery package from power functions. And uh, the last one is the Emerald Express, also called the Flying Scotsman in the original. Uh, it has a 40 bricks receiver inside. Uh, it's, it's not so easy to integrate, it's a little bit of tinkering uh, because it's pretty narrow inside uh, the engine. But if you uh, spend a little bit of time with it, it's doable. And uh, in the uh, car behind, we have the uh, battery package from Lego that looks like uh, normally a normal battery uh, package for power functions, but it has a built-in uh, battery that is really the best uh, I would recommend to have as a battery if you don't go into the high voltage area, uh, but it's pretty expensive and LEGO uh, doesn't have it anymore in the standard line of uh, products. As a summary, we're not using our normal uh, remote controls anymore for the trains, but we operate them via a computer. So let's have a look at all of this in our software on the computer. We're using the end control software from 40 bricks as the basic framework. We have extended the framework by uh, a lot of functionality that we need for our train automation project. It's around 1,500 lines of code in the programming language Python. And um, what is actually standard in control features uh, is the uh, train controllers that you see here. ICE, EST, MAE, that's all uh, codes for the trains that we have on our layout. For example, if I want to let the Eurostar uh, drive to some place, I could simply accelerate the train motor in the manual mode in which we are, and the train would start to move. If we want to bring the train onto a specific track, for example, track seven, which would be here in that area, I can also use the track selector. If I press this, the Flying Scotsman is automatically accelerating, going in this loop, and as soon as he has reached the target, he will get slower and stops. And now the train is on a different track. And now we could possibly uh, get the TGV, which is in orange here, uh, into the main train station, that's track four. So we could select track four and hit the track selector, or we simply 
uh, use the station selector. Station A is in this case the main train station. So if we tell TGV to go to the main train station, which we do now, it automatically selects the track and goes into the station. So let's have a look at the supported train receivers. If we go into the configuration mode of N control and go on a train tile, we see a list of supported uh, receivers. The first one and the second one are the receivers from 40 bricks. Then it's the Lego powered up hub. And if you have an S brick, then you can also use it as a train receiver. Talking about trains, it's also important to talk about tricks. Uh, I've always been a uh, 9 volt uh, fan and all those trains that you can see here were powered until recently with 9 volt motors and uh, the electricity came directly from the copper tricks. But last year we found a company called Trixbrix and they are supplying the Lego train world with new switches that have a fantastic geometry. What you see here is switches that have a radius in their bow area of 104. That means the radius of that curve part here of the switch is more than two and a half times larger than the radius of a standard Lego curve. And uh, it goes from one track to the next parallel track over five standard tracks. Uh, and um, you have a lot of different switches. For example, here is a triple switch. That is a double slip switch that has uh, four options for switching for each of the entries uh, and exits. And with these kind of switches, uh, we really had fun in our automation project. And the most uh, important thing is that you can motorize those switches with little servo motors that doesn't cost a lot, something like 10 or 20 euros. And uh, we can connect, and, and we have connected uh, those motors to our automation system and our central computer. And how that works, uh, I'm going to show in a different video.